specifically uh, with regard to um, uh, recently with regard to uh, steroid use. They've had uh, you know congressional hearings, mm -hmm. um, et cetera, et cetera. But they are not um, unwilling to make points, stick their noses in when there are issues that they think are somehow relevant. We don't really seem to do that here in this country, do we? The government doesn't. The judicial system always seems to be looking at things. I mean, the the, uh, the Quebec provincial police uh, arrested or charged uh, Patrice Cormier. People in Vancouver, there have been charges. I mean, uh, the days of uh, Bill McMurtry here in Toronto in the 70s. I mean, it, it it's, like not it's not but few and far between. But, but it's, it's, it's being left to the justice system as opposed to the government. Uh, Glenn Thibault is a, a member of Parliament for uh, Sudbury. He is the NDP's uh, critic of sport. He joins us uh, on the uh, phone. Glenn, how are you? I'm doing well, Bob. Yourself? I'm all right. Good. So what do you make of this? I mean, should we be more like the Americans that are, uh, so that our, our, our government is, uh, is there to ask questions, raise issues, uh, squeeze sports to um, succumb to whatever our, our pleasures or whims happen to be? Or is, this, is it no place for government? Well, it, it's one of those difficult decisions when, when we're looking at wanting to get involved in sports um, and when I'm posing questions in the House, right? So what the states are doing, I think they're on track in, in relation to, you know, if we're talking about a couple of the things that I've done, which is, you know, talking about uh, the increase in violence in sport, looking at maybe a possible Royal Commission, the stuff coming out in concussion excuse me, concussions uh, yesterday. Um, if we can do something to to protect the players, and, and what I worry about, yeah, it's, it's sad to see when it happens at uh, the professional level, but it's, it's the volunteer mom and dad who's running the league who doesn't necessarily know all of the ins and outs. Um, if we have legislation in place that can actually help them, I think that's a step in the right direction. All right, so where are we on that? Is, uh, do you, is it your perception that this government is um, not inclined to uh, step into this arena? Um, well, you know, if I look at uh, the response that I had in relation to the request to look into the violence in sports, um, they said, no, we want to leave it to the leagues. Um, I asked the question in the House today relating to, you know, can we look at trying to implement something similar to the United States? You know, we have to make our own laws and legislation. But when they have the return to play guidelines for amateur athletics, uh, in the house and i guess that depends on how many of them come back today but uh, when they have something similar we should be able to look at that and come up with our own plans to ensure that you know we're looking at the inherent risks of contact sport um we understand that but we also need to create a safe place for uh, all participants in all sports could you prioritize the issues um that you see in in sports particularly amateur sports when you're looking at amateur sports, um, last year there was just numerous cases, uh, you know, of, of an increase in violence that we're seeing. And my staff and I started documenting uh, the numerous incidents. And you know, from a 17-year-old Edmonton uh, player in hockey, uh, you know, having to get half of his intestines removed because he got speared, to you know, a baseball player, uh, you know, 12 years old, rushing the mound after a high pitch, but not dropping the baseball bat. So there's there, that aspect as well. But on the concussion side, just, you know, it, it's out in the news and we're, and we're seeing the long-term effects on players. And you know what, we've got to do something to ensure that our game is played, um, you know, and, and that we can continue to enhance the game. But let's make it a little bit safer. And I think there's things that we have to look at, right? So, you know. Well, and here's the, here's the problem we have, Glenn. And, and we, we've been following this for 20 years now. And, and, and I... Um I have great respect for many in the infrastructure of hockey in this country, and yet they are pedantic at best in making change. There is this inherent argument or fear that um, somehow uh, we're going to pansify the game if we if we start looking at the violence in the sport and, and trying to take it away. Interestingly enough, yesterday on the day that this commission came down and said that the incidence of concussions were seven times greater mm -hmm. than we thought uh, they, they were, uh, on this very program, um, or on this very radio station, Nick Kiprios and Wendell Clark engaged in a conversation about uh, fights and how you should or shouldn't um, fight for yourself and that the problem in hockey today is well you know there are too many other guys to fight for you back in the day when you fought for yourself mm -hmm. you know you didn't have these problems and 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 it was you know it was it was shocking but it isn't shocking because there is a constituency a hardcore constituency of hockey people that believe this to be true 
that um, the problem, the reason there are so, they'll tell you the reason there are so many concussions is because there are too many rules to prohibit you from hitting. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's, it's, it's just, it's so counterintuitive. You realize you can't get to these people. And so, um, I, you know, I'm almost in favor of something, somebody like the, the, the federal government stepping in and saying, all right, we believe that you, the infrastructure of hockey, while you do many good things, are incapable of policing yourselves. Mm -hmm. And we have to police, we're, we're going we're gonna to make the rules for you. It, you know what, when, you, when I recall the, uh, the shot on Savard last year, you know, in the NHL and then Tam and everyone else, you know, when you sign up to play hockey or even to watch a game, you know, I absolutely love hockey, right? I refed it, I played it, all that other stuff. But no one wants to see that. And if we're starting to see more and more of it, that's trickling down into, into the kids that are playing the game. And we've got to start addressing it there. And you know what? I think that's where we need to step in. Because I said, as I said off the top, my worry is for, you know what? When I played hockey, my father was on the executive of the playground league. Mm -hmm. um, and they made the ice and made all the decisions and right. helped the referees. It's these people that we need to help so we can sh secure our game so that don't, we don't lose it to violence. I don't have all those answers. But, but, but we have reports all over the place that talk about it. And we have great people out there that we could bring together. Sure, But, but how, and, and, and I, I guess... I'm in full agreement with what with, with both of you have said. My question, my question really is, but don't we have laws that deal with this already? Isn't it, it can't, if, if society... It's not about it, laws, John. It's about the code. It's about the no, code no, but, of conduct in the game. But the justice system is there for a reason too, Bob. Yeah, and, but, and I mean, so we can, we can have another, and with all due respect, we can have a royal commission on the violence in sports... And yeah, we it's got to have meat. There's got to be meat yeah, on the bottom. No, but uh, but but I mean the, the, that's why the judicial system is there in the first place. No. That's why that's I, why the police can go and arrest Marty McSorty for hitting Donald Brashear over the head with a stick. But they do, they don't do it enough right now, and I think that goes back to what Bob was saying: is the code. Well, it's a hockey game. When you strap on the helmet, some of the laws don't apply, and that was one of the things that I was hoping to get addressed in the Royal Commission. Oh. Because if you and I were playing tennis. And I didn't like the shot you hit past me. It was an ace. I jumped the, I jumped the net. I smack you with my tennis racket. That's you've assault. Seen, I'm automatically going to get charged. That's assault. assault. Yeah. You've obviously but seen me play tennis. Hockey? Yeah. I, I, it's a, I, I, I've been asking that question for 20 years. <laughs> I, I don't know the answer to that, but they will, they will, I mean, the hockey people will vehemently defend that notion that we can police the game. And the answer, I, I guess what we are saying is, well, no, you can't. The evidence is to the contrary. Yes, we're starting to see the, the number of incidents of violence in sport, and I know we were talking initially about concussions, which also comes to that part of the game. We've, we're starting to see a higher prevalence, and we've got to be able to look at some of the things. I've always said one of the things we can't forget to look at is equipment. When I played, they were called pads because they were exactly that. It was padding. It's now made, some of the stuff's made out of Kevlar. Oh, I know. So when you take an elbow to the head, back in the day, it used to hurt me more because it was padding. Now the Kevlar, you're, you're, you're knocking out some teeth and giving the guy a concussion. Any fear that all of this discussion will cost parents more money to play the game? Insurance rates will go up? Everything like that? Well, if you look at what Idaho is doing right now, they've, uh, they're looking at uh, instituting their uh, uh, you know, return to play, but they're worried about liability. Right. And so what we need to do is, you know, again, part of the legislation, I think, is, is to try and address that and look at, you know, is, you know, is it going to cost too much already in terms of insurance? Are we going to have liability issues? So <laughs> we have to start being concerned about all aspects and look at ways of fixing this because there's a bigger picture to this is, you know what, we have an obesity problem with our kids. They're playing more hockey on, you know, whatever electronic game they have at home rather than getting out and playing it. Well, all those high school gyms can't be used because of those insurance issues. Yeah. I mean, we're not allowed to go in them because, who, you know, what if the, if the kid turns an ankle, we've got a problem. Yeah. So, again, that's where I think we need to come in uh, and, and, you know, start addressing this provincially and federally because... You know, it's not that I want, like I said, I don't want to wear zebra stripes. I did that enough when I was not a politician. We don't want politics uh, on the ice, but what we need is to ensure that there's legislation in place to make sure that we can all play safely and, and still enjoy a, a, good, uh, a good hockey game. Well, um, I'm with you on it. I mean, for whatever that's worth, and I think John is for the most part, too. Um, you know, we, we don't really want to see the, the hockey infrastructure 
um, succumb to higher powers because they can't control it. But unfortunately, they don't seem to be getting the message. They, there's rhetoric out there. They speak a good game, but they're not acting, and they're not act, and and they're they're failing in terms of the kids. This study yesterday demonstrated not only that it was uh, the incidents were seven times higher than anticipated of concussions, but that 80 percent of the concussions that were observed were deemed to be, and I'm going to use the wrong term, but deliberate hits, deliberate attempts to injure, if you will. And um, that's staggering well, and stunning. And, and that's, that's what we need to take out of the game. And if, hockey, if the hockey infrastructure is going to throw up their hands and say, we don't know how to do it, well, guess what? We'll find, um, we'll find somebody who knows how to do it. Mm -hmm. uh, we wish you good luck with it. And uh, we'll stay in touch with, it, with you if we can as uh, you go down the road, where, whatever the road is. And if you need any help, let us know. Perfect. Thanks, guys. It was a pleasure. Thanks, Glenn. You know, Bob, th th this, is a wa this could be a watershed mark for 